Hey guys, welcome to another weekend reading vlog. I'm really excited about this one because I'm in the middle of a couple of books that are way surpassing my expectations. Um, I'm in the middle of four books right now, I think. Um, so I'll kind of let you know what it is that I'm reading. I'm hoping to finish at least two of them this weekend. We'll see how this goes. Um, so the first book that I'm reading, I'm actually currently reading it as an ebook, and that is The Pursuit of God. I'm joining in with Krista's read-along for this. Um, this weekend on Sunday is actually, I think, the first live discussion, which I'll have to miss, I think, because of the timing. Uh, time zone stuff confuses me. Um, but it's Canadian Thanksgiving here this weekend, um, and I have a supper, I think, like, right over the time that the discussion is going live, but I'm still planning on watching it. So I am reading The Pursuit of God and the first two chapters were really, really good. I was expecting it to be a lot more like classic feeling and harder to get into and way above me. Um, but I really enjoyed the first two chapters and then I read chapter three and I think I'm, I can't remember if I've started chapter four. I think I've just read the first three chapters, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, so that is the first book that I am reading. I have to read, uh, I think, chapter... Yeah, there we go. Someone's enjoying driving their motorbike. Um, I have to read, by the, uh, read the end of chapter five by Sunday. So that I need to do. Um, I'm also currently reading North and South by Eliz Elizabeth Glass Gaskell. I always want to call it her Glasgow, Gaskell. Um, anyway, um, I'm reading this one for Victober, and I am that far. I've read 226 pages out of 650, um, and I'm really enjoying this. I normally struggle with reading books from this time period. Um, so our main character is Margaret, and she has moved from her home that she loved. She's probably 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there. Um, her dad was a, I always forget the terminology, like a rector or something of the sort. They left their little parish and they're now living in this like smoky town that is just, um, I guess it's just like a, like a labor town and it's uh, not very pretty and whatever. But I don't know. I don't know why I'm enjoying this one. I feel like it's fairly easy to read compared to some of the Victorian literature I've read before. And I feel like Margaret is maybe a bit of a different character than I'm used to. Um, she, especially with her move and her dad has less money now, she's having to do a lot more physical labor. And she's not just sitting around like Jane Austen's women talking about how much money people make each year. Um, and even like when Jane Austen is like making fun of people doing that, I still don't want to read about it because people are still doing it in her books. Um, anyway, so I don't really know where this book is going. I thought if it was going to be kind of hard to get into, I would read a bit of a summary beforehand, um, but it hasn't been, so I haven't. So I have no idea where this is going, um, but I'm enjoying the reading experience here so far. And then I'm also not very far. Also reading The Pawn by Stephen James. Um, I thought that I was going to really like this one and I started it a few days ago and I haven't read much of it. It's a pretty quick read but it starts out like the first, I think it's the prologue? Yeah, the prologue. is a very gruesome scene. I don't know, I couldn't handle it. Um, so I'm curious to see where the mystery part goes from here. Apparently um, the main character, he is tracking a serial killer that he can't catch. Um, but there's multiple things going on here. And so far this book shows you into the thoughts and um, actions of the serial killer. And I don't like it when books do that. Um, this is like one of my biggest pet peeves in mystery books actually, is when you ha you're mostly following like the, de the detective, but you're also getting a glimpse into, I don't know, like the bad guy, um, what they're doing and their thoughts. And I really don't like that. So, so far, yeah, I haven't been picking this up, but I would like to read this, finish it this weekend because it is a fairly easy read. 
um, and I want to continue on. I picked the largest TBR for this month, um, so I need to get going on that. And, and I want to, um, but I don't want to get hung up on a book. So there's that. And then the last book, the one that I'm listening to, um, is The Thursday Murder Club. Now, I talked about this one in my um, bookish newsletter that I sent out yesterday and told everyone that this has been like the most fun reading experience that I've ever had. Um, so I'm listening to it on audio. This is about the Thursday Murder Club, which is a group of like 70 and 80 year old people who get together every Thursday to try to solve unsolved murders. And um, they end up being kind of in the middle of one. And we follow a couple different people um, the narration is very interesting, but every now and then we have like a diary entry by this one lady named Joyce and I just love her writing. It is so old lady, like she's kind of talking about this murder, but then she's talking about like this store that she wants to go to and it's, it's kind of like scattered. And then also the old people, they're helping the uh, police, but like they're just like taking over. Um, but they use their age to their advantage. There's one point where they want to make like this guy really uncomfortable so that they can get some information from him. And so they put him on a two and a half seat sofa, put him in the middle and then put an old person on either side. And then they give him the hot tea that he has to hold and then like uh, some kind of cake on his saucer. And he's just like cramped in there, but he's like thinking these old people are, you know, being so sweet and they're trying to be so nice and they are admiring him and really they're just they're they're just totally playing him and I think it's hilarious so I am where am I maybe like that far so I only have a little bit left motor guy motorbike guys back So I'll probably finish this today, I think. I don't know how much, I have the physical book and normally when I'm this close to the end, I can read it a lot faster than I can listen to it. I have two hours and 47 minutes and I listen to that on double time. So um, a little over an hour and a half, um, but a little under an hour and a half. Um, I don't know, I'm really liking the audiobook. The narrator is doing such a good job. It's adding so much, like the old people speak is just coming through so well that I want to keep listening to it even though I could finish it faster by reading it. And I did see when I was um, sending out my newsletter that book two is out. Uh, it's called The Man Who Died Twice. And I, <gasps> no, no. I just saw who wrote this. The name didn't sound that familiar to me. <gasps> Richard Osman? You guys, he's on, um, okay, my favorite. So I always say I don't watch much TV, um, but like a show that I really like is called Would I Lie to You? And he is often on there. No way, I had no idea. Oh. Wow, okay, this just makes it so much better. Um, okay, the second book is called The Man Who Died Twice, and oh, I always hit myself in the glasses. Oh, my library has a physical book, so I've requested it, but they're all out, or they don't have them in yet, maybe, because it just came out last week. Um, but they don't have the audiobook yet, and I, like, judging from this experience, I really want to read this on audio. Um, so, I'm like, do I buy it on Audible? I have a subscription, I could do that, but I hate buying the second book in a series and I'm not sure I would ever re-listen to it and I don't think anyone in my family would listen to it. So then I don't really like to buy an audiobook. So I'm kind of in a, in a bit of a pickle here, um, but I'm really enjoying this one. Even if the ending sucks, like the reading experience has been so good that I might just have to rate this five stars. And then knowing who wrote it, see like I never pay attention to authors um, or hardly ever. Uh, yeah. So that's where I'm at with that and all my books. According to my audiobook, I'm 78% of the way through this. Um, yeah, so we will see where this weekend takes us. Hopefully some good food with Thanksgiving and some good reading.
So I'm just setting up to film my TBR shelf. Um, but first I thought I would talk about all the books that I've been reading because uh, there's quite a few. Let's, um, let's start with the fun one. Let's start with The Thursday Murder Club. I finished this yesterday, yesterday evening, and thoroughly enjoyed the reading process, you guys. Um, let me put down all these other books. Where do I even begin? So, uh, first of all, let's let's start with Richard Osman. Um, so the uh, the show I was talking about, Would I Lie to You? He is often a guest on there, and he is not my favorite guest by far. Um, the show actually has all or a lot of the episodes on YouTube. If I can find, I will link some of my favorite episodes um, in the description box. Uh, so what what happens is the people come on, there's like two different teams, and one person reads something from a card in front of them. And it's usually some kind of rid ridiculous story that they're trying to say is true. And the other team has to guess if it's true or not. And they can ask questions and it starts off with, um, I don't know, they, they ask questions and it just kind of like starts spiraling. And sometimes you're like, oh, this is, there's no way this is true. And then it's true. And then there's other times where you're like, this, this has to be true. And then it's fake. My favorites are for sure, um, I accidentally bought a horse. I'll definitely leave that one linked below. Um, and then uh, there's a guy, oh, okay, so Rod Gilbert, I think is his name. And then also Bob Mortimer. They're, anytime they're on the show, their stories are hilarious or the way they tell their stories are hilarious. Um, anyway, so Richard Osman is not my favorite person on the show, but I know him from that show. Anyway, back to this. Uh, yeah, so the ending was very much the same as the rest of the book. I was thoroughly entertained the entire time I was reading this. I haven't read a book that I would say I like was this much fun in a very long time. Um, so I thought I had an idea on... So like these old people are sucked into this current murder and I thought I kind of knew where things were going. I had an idea on a suspect and I was like, okay, like, I don't like knowing. If I can figure it out, I feel like the book isn't as good, but I was like, well, if it is who I think it is, I still like the book. And then it turns out it wasn't even who I thought it was. And yeah, I don't know. This book was just such a fun ride. Highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobook. I wish Richard Osman would be narrating it himself. It's, it's a female narrator, which works really well for um, the lady who has the diary entries. And yeah, I don't know. I just had so much fun with this one. And I told Jared he has to listen to it because I need I need to talk about it with someone. And then knowing who wrote it, we watch um, What I Lie to You together usually. So, I mean, always, I never watch TV by myself. Um, but yes, I need him to read it so we can talk about it. And then maybe I will buy book two on Audible if he enjoys book one. We'll see, we'll see where that goes. Then I am still reading North and South. Um, I think I read about 50 pages yesterday. I'm on 278. There is a strike going on. I, um, oh, I thought this was funny. Uh, this is page 250 in my book. Uh, Margaret had been to a dinner party uh, with some rich ladies and she is not a rich lady herself, but because her dad is um, like tutoring some of these richer people, they get kind of like taken up into society a little bit. And she was talking about, uh, she was, I think, telling her father or her mother or something about her evening. And she said, I had never thought about it. Oh, the ladies were so dull, Papa. Oh, so dull. Yet it, I think it was clever too. It reminded me of our old game of having each so many nouns to introduce into a sentence. And he's like, what do you mean, child? Why? They took nouns that were signs of things which gave evidence of wealth. Housekeepers, undergardeners, extent of glass, valuable lace, diamonds, and all such things. And each one formed her speech so as to bring in them all, bring them all in, in the prettiest accidental manner possible. I thought that was funny, so everyone's just trying to like 
boast about as many things as they can in their sentences. Uh, yeah. So obviously I have a ways to go for this. Not quite halfway yet. Still really enjoying this for a Victorian novel. That is not something I've really ever done before. So I like kind of reading a couple chapters a day in this. Then last night I decided to pick up some poetry and I got this book from the library, The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane. And you guys, this is so gorgeous. Um, I shared a few clips already, but I feel like just every page is so gorgeous. Um, I have read his The Lost Words, except that one is such a huge book that it makes it hard to read. Um, I love the size of this and I think I want to buy this book. And it really inspired me. Let's find another really cool, pretty page. Like, um, the illustrations are by Jackie Morris. So originally my goal was for November to participate in NaNoWriMo. I've always wanted to write a book. I didn't think that whatever came out of NaNoWriMo would be actually a book that I would like be really proud of, but I thought it'd be fun to try, kind of like start thinking about writing a book and so just write a book for fun. Um, that decision I made when we only had one of our foster kids and the other one was looking like he was going to be going but now the baby has come back and I don't see how it would be possible to do NaNoWriMo and all the other things I like to do. Like if I decide, decided to not read and not do YouTube videos and not do this and that I could make time. Um, and my husband is like way like so nice and he is so willing to give me time um, but I'm, I don't think I can justify slash I don't think that is like the highest thing on my priority list. I may change this yet. I, I may. Um, but what I, this book made me think of was what about writing like a poem a day in November? I feel like that's a little bit more on the level that I could uh, reach right now with four kids and homeschooling and doing all the other things. Um, so I feel like that might be a thing that I could do. So I was thinking, what I'm thinking right now is like finding a picture that inspires me and then writing the poem based off of that picture. Um, so I've been like collecting a few that may turn into poems. I don't know, this is what I'm thinking about for November. Um, we'll see what actually happens. But if it does happen, it is all because of this book. I had gotten a few poetry books from the library recently. This is another one, In the Salt Marsh by Nancy Willard. I know from reading Emily Dickinson's poems, and I think she's one of my favorite poets, um, that I like nature poetry. And so I was specifically looking for nature poetry when I was searching on my library website, and In the Salt Marsh by Nancy Willard was one of the ones. Um, I started reading this one and I really didn't like it. Um, I don't even know if I can like explain why. Um, I just, I didn't like the writing. I didn't like her topic or I think, yeah, I, it's, it's so hard with poetry. I don't know exactly even what it was, but I wasn't a fan of these. So I read a few, not gonna read anymore. I've been like just reading a little bit from all the books. Uh, so then I read more of The Pawn. I am now 158 pages in. Still struggling a bit with this book. It's not, gripping me like I thought it would um, and then I was like dreaming about ser serial killers last night because of it so I need to stop reading it earlier in the evening that's for sure um, but I would still really like to get this done this weekend because it's hindering me from picking up some other books on my TBR there are things I like about it there are some things that I find really creative I'm just not a huge fan of our main character and then like he has this kind of like troubled relationship with his stepdaughter and I, so much is just like miscommunication and I hate those kinds of things. So yeah, we'll see where this one goes. I'm definitely seeing it to the end. Just need to push myself with it. And the last book. I just started this one on audio and that is The Host. Um, I think this is like a 24 hour audio book. This is why I listen to audiobooks books um, on double speed. I am an hour and 22 minutes. See, that is why double speed is awesome. Um, I'm 6% in, have 21 hours left to go, which thankfully will just be a little bit over 10 hours of real time. Um, I don't have a lot of audiobook listening time these days, so I'm not sure how I'm, far I'm gonna get in this, but this is one that I wanted to read so bad this year because so many people were talking about it to me last year. Um, so from what I know, this is pretty much like alien invasion. 
aliens invading human bodies. Um, very outside my comfort zone, but hey, give it a try. Um, and I don't really have anything to say about this so far because even though I'm an hour and 22 minutes in, 6% still isn't really enough to say much. We follow like, I think it's called a soul, which I think is like an, I don't know, an alien being that is getting put in a human being's body. I don't really even know. Um, I'm along for the ride. So that is where I am currently at with all my books. I'm going to try a couple other poetry books um, and then just keep plugging away on the three that I'm currently reading. But first, I need to film my TBR shelf video. down. Um, also, it just isn't this mug awesome. I got a few books to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to kind of close up this reading vlog by tell you, telling you what I've been reading in the last 24 hours. Um, today was a really weird day because we ended up not going to church. A couple of the kids were sick and so we just decided to play things safe. We all stayed home and that feels weird because we never stay home from church. Uh, so it's just been a really weird day. I ended up finishing watching um, You've Got Mail because I never watch TV and I can't sit, uh, the movie's two hours long, I can't sit for more than an hour. Um, I can read for hours on end without moving, but movies I can't do. So I finished that, I read some more of The Pursuit of God, and I finished a book. So let's see, where should we start here? Um, still, still going strong on my north and south, um, 338 pages. So I read a little over 100 pages in the um, like this weekend. Uh, so there's that. Um, actually, just a little over halfway now. Still enjoying that. Not much new to say there. I tried another poetry book. This is Barbara Kings Oliver's How to Fly in 10,000 Easy Lessons. Um, didn't really enjoy any of the poems, so I'm not continuing on with that. Same thing with Poems Have Roots. Guys, I seriously just requested like all the poetry books out for my library didn't like these as well, so there's that. Um, let's keep talking about poetry. The Sweet Life, uh, this is one that a sweet subscriber sent to me. Her name is Emily. Um, and this is like quotes and poems and stuff. And there was a few funny ones in here. Uh, some that I thought bookish friends would uh, relate to. And I just have to see. Oh yes, here, here's a good one. People say that life is the thing, but I prefer books. I liked that one. 
and there was another one and the illustrations are so cool uh, what was the other one here Oh yes, I thought this one was funny. No human being believes that any other human being has a right to be in bed when he himself is up. I have a kid that uh, gets annoyed that the other kid can like sleep forever. Um, so that's that was a funny one as well. Okay, and then I don't think I've listened to any more of the host since I last shared. I don't think I've listened to anything in the 20, last 24 hours. So nothing really to update there. Um, and then the pawn, I ended up finishing this one. This was, the ending was better. So I actually ordered book two from Book Outlet, now that it's up and running again. I ordered it, um, the other day. And of course it was like right before I started reading this. If I would have started reading this first, I wouldn't have ordered book two because I wasn't really enjoying the beginning of this. But the ending I enjoyed. This book is definitely more graphic and gruesome than a lot of suspense I've read, especially considering this is supposed to be Christian suspense, although I haven't really seen a whole lot of evidence of that yet. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't like. I didn't like that we were in the head of the serial killer and stuff like that, um, but you still don't know who it is. So, yeah. I don't know. It ended up being better than I thought. Then like the relationship stuff that was bugging me kind of I think is slowly working itself out as well. But I'm not sure how much I'm going to read into this series. Especially since I'm assuming it's the same serial killer that they follow through the entire series. Like I kind of want a little bit of closure at the end if it's going to be longer than a trilogy. So I kind of undecided. I think I'm going to read book two and then go from there. Oh, that's much too hot. Ah, uh, burnt my lip. Um, yeah, so other than that, I read Thursday Murder Club this weekend. Really enjoyed that. So I finished two books, got halfway through North and South, started another audiobook, um, reading a bunch of poetry books. Actually, I'm only reading two. I'm reading The Sweet Life and, um, the Lost Spells. But I crossed off, what, three other poetry books? So this has been a very productive reading weekend. So my next, my plans for my next reading vlog um, is for that to be the Hey reader -a -thon. I plan on doing a week-long vlog um, with the books that I'm reading. I still need to figure out exactly which ones they're going to be because I have my TBR and I need to figure out which ones I'm actually gonna use for the readathon. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me for this weekend, guys.